Hello, I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to continue with part two of our of the topic, which says assurance of victory. Assurance of victory. Um, during the first edition, we spoke about the enemies within. This time around, we're going to be examining the enemies without. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you. We appreciate you. We bless your holy name. You are mighty. You are powerful. You are excellent. You are caring. Your love, your mercy is enduring forever. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. We particularly thank you over all the works of your hands in this planet and in the celestial places. We want to appreciate you because <laughs> the works of your hands are just too many and all of them are good. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the consistency of your love that stays with us day and night, 24-7, and how you fight the battles of our lives for us, even that we do not know. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, we repent of all our sins. Please forgive us. The ones committed by us, the ones committed by our great, great, great forefathers and parents from the inception of this world till now. Please forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. And please, that he grant us the grace to seek you first and your righteousness so that we will be able to live above sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. This morning, we bring to you our hearts. Please prepare these hearts for understanding. Teach us your precepts so that we will be guided in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please always remember to share these messages. Let's all be part of the progress of other people. Share them. God bless you. Now, we looked at the enemy <coughs> within, which is ourselves. And uh, that topic is so wide that Enemies within the Lord can beat them. And they are available in every stage of our lives. Let's take one, a few of them. You drop off in your school, you are your own enemy. You, you, your career, you don't take it seriously, and you want to make it in life, you are your own enemy. You are falsifying records, you are stealing in order to make quick wealth, you are your own enemy. You are going for gaming, you know, uh, all these betting pools and betting in the name of wanting to get rich, you are the enemy of yourself. And then not only that, in your marriage, you impregnate children, I mean, girls all over the place, you become fathers by accident or fathers, you know, against the will of God. You are the enemy of yourself. You are even the enemy without of, of the children you are bringing. Now, you didn't treat your wife well. You are not taking good care of your family. You are your own enemy. And there is no way you will enjoy the home. And then you don't even prepare for the rainy day. And then you retire. You suddenly you find yourself at the age of 70 that you no longer can do what you were doing before. And there's no leftover. You are your own enemy. And then you leave this world. You didn't know God. And you now die. And then you go to hell, which will not be anybody's portion. And then you do, who is the enemy? You are your own enemy. You abandon God. Now, let's, these are several other ways in which you are the enemy within your own self. Now, let's take the enemies without. Let's take. You see, brethren, before you start looking at human beings as enemies, there are a lot of forces in the air, even the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the even the sunlight, the atmosphere. There are a lot of things that are there. The germs, the the um, the germs, the viruses like the coronavirus which you cannot see with your own eyes. The, let's, let's take the mosquitoes. Minor thing that you look at as minor today have, has killed several people in the past. Mosquitoes. And then a lot of dangers that we see all over the places. If it is too cold, we are in trouble. If it is too uh, hot, we are in trouble. And a lot of enemies. Medic, that all these ones can be called medical situations. We give glory to God that's given human beings revelations as to how to resolve them. Coronavirus is the latest, and by God's grace, it is going. At least there is vaccination against it now. If God did not give us that special ability, whoever did, whoever does it, if God does not give them special ability to conquer those things, this, this thing would have actually exterminated the entire human beings. Then look at um, the mosquito thing we are talking about today. If you take anti-malaria, and then you take preventive measures like using the nets and then spraying your house with fumigation and all that, you know, be careful also with fumigation because they can be harmful. And even the mosquito, uh, the fleet we are talking about can be as dangerous because you need to spray it at least 30 minutes before going there. You shut all your windows, all your doors, because many of us say these things don't work. They do work. Shut everything and then spray the entire place underneath, under, you know, under your bed in the, and spray in the air, you know, above your head. That's better. So the thing comes down and captures them. So if you do that and leave the place for at least 30 minutes, and after that 30 minutes, then open your windows. If you have fan, put on your fan. If the uh, uh, PCL will allow you. If not, open your windows because it is assumed that you have net there. And then the uh, poison in the air would have abated somehow, and the mosquitoes would have been dead for that night. If you do that three times in a week, you are free from mosquito. And then above all, if you can use your net, I know it's inconvenient. Everything has its own disadvantage, but it's you know it's still good. 
common sense dictates that you protect yourself against all these things. Then in terms of hygiene, most, in fact, I would say not less than 50 to 60% of the illnesses that we have come as a result of um, uh, bad hygiene habits. We are not, we don't live a hygienic life. We are very careless. Uh, we have this saying here that um, dirty water doesn't kill. It will make it fine. <laughs> it's a stupid saying. Now that we know better, there are a lot of things in the water. I mean, the water that people excreted upon, you know, far away, flowing river, and then you go there down here because it appears clean, you start drinking. You see, a lot of, we well, thank God for the immunity. I know that God really helped us to, by giving us a lot of, I mean, over time, we develop immunity against the things. To God be the glory. So when we live careless lives, many of us, we are sick. Instead of quickly attending to them, that's why I love one of my doctors. You see, who said, look, if you know what to do about your state of health, as a primary or first aid measure, do it. Is it, thank God, anti-malaria things are common. You know the symptoms. And they're all over the counter. Don't wait until the headache breaks up your head, the persistent headache, or you are sleeping and you begin to see human beings turning to animals or, you know, and so on and so forth. And then you, instead of attributing it to enemies without, well, it's an enemy without because mosquito are beating you. It's an external enemy. And then the parasites are working and your system is fighting it and then you have become restless and all that. Don't wait until it kills you. Start with the common panadol and add your anti-malaria, go to your pharmacy or any chemist. Take those ones first before they become serious. But if they are not abating, please go straight to the hospital. Then look at the other enemy, still external enemy, spiritual forces. Bible the crisis, the troubles that people of the world are going to pass through, you will pass through. But the assurance of victory over the works of the enemies is that you are victorious. So when you have challenges, face the challenge, know the direction it is coming from. Is it medical? Is it self-made? Is it external? Like we are just analyzing. Then you have another set of enemies. People don't just want to know who, they don't want you to exist. The Hamans of this world, the Joseph's brothers of this world, they are all there. They don't want you to exist. And when they see you making progress, they're angry. <laughs> and all these ones, you don't even pray that they should die. That's why what Christ taught us. The Old Testament tells you, an eye for an eye. But I do tell you, pray for death. Give them food. Give them water. Even if at all you know them or you identify them. There are some bosses in the offices, they don't want to see you. Talk less of you making progress. They just hate you. Even some mothers do hate their own children. Some brothers hate their brothers, their sisters. Some hate their parents. You see, all these are enemies without. And then, but many times, I went to one church one day, and they were praying, uh, you know, they prayed over the enemies, and then, and then the following day, see, the lady was now giving testimony that, oh, yesterday we prayed over the enemy, and by the time I got home, my father had died. Ah, say praise God. Eh? That is not, <laughs> that's not, even if your father is your enemy, all you need to do is pray for that, your father, for God to turn to change his or her. Some people, it's their own wives that are their troubles. The, some people, it's the husbands that are the troubles of their wives, or even for the, parents, for the children. So, these enemies that we see here, some of them are fabricated, but they are real enemies. Like I said, your own, being your own, and yourself being your own enemy, then your, then the external forces, the spiritual forces, the powers that be in places, they are all there. But one thing is, that's why we say, if you know Christ, see what Christ said in John 16. I tell you these things in advance. I think that's in verse 32. He said, I tell you this thing in advance so that you can have peace in the world of turbulence. When you see things happening, when you have this assurance that you are victorious over yourself, being your own enemy, that is, you now recognize where you are going wrong and you start correcting them, then you get the desired results. You are lazy, you stop being lazy. The Bible says, let him who is lazy stop lazy around, let him labor with his hands so that he can feed himself and then help others. Do you know that you, you are just crying for help me, help me? God well, create, create you for the purpose of also helping others. If you don't have, you can't help. For how long will you depend upon somebody else to take 100% care of you? We'll talk about helping people later. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, brethren, it is important. In spite of all these other enemies within our enemies, without, all of them can be conquered. You are sick, take special care of your health in good time before it degenerates into anything. Most of the cancer and everything that we have in this world, they are because of our lifestyles. Dangerous chemicals that we have consumed and many, many others. Even don't think it's the orthodox medicine alone. The abos, the conk abos we are taking here. Terribly fermented abo, you don't know the composition. You take them, they damage your kidney, and then you attribute it to either internal or external enemies. No, I mean, you don't know the composition. So you need to take good care of yourself on time. And then you sit down consuming alcohol all the time. Your liver is damaged. 
Now you are blaming external enemy who does not want you to progress in life. So please. But however, you can overcome all of them. Sins that we are committing against ourselves and against others. We can overcome them if we care. And the Lord will give us, he has given us victory. It is for us to take that victory. Take our life seriously and take proper measures that would make us not to fall victim. God has conquered. That, do you know what God had deposited in your body? The one they call the white cell, is it white, white blood cell or whatever. The one that fights the enemy that enters into your system. That one alone. It is when they have been overpowered that then you begin to fall and begin to get weak and the other enemies overpower them and then eventually one dies. They will not die a cheap death in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's be careful. Both as for the enemies within, overcome your own self. Then as for the enemies without, take proper measures. Pray for them. And they pray also that God gives you victory. He fights the battle. It's not you that fights it. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, we just want to thank you again. We worship you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for another wonderful time this morning. Glory be to your name. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we pray. Open our inner eyes, spiritual eyes, so that we will be able to behold those things where we are doing it, where we are not getting it, and give us the courage to start correcting ourselves so that we don't waste ourselves away in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Bless it to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Brethren, please share these messages. Very important. You may be helped. You may be saving lives. Even I'm sure you will be saving lives. God bless you. I think these are the Gospels in the way you never have had them before. Or maybe you had them this way before, but you didn't really, they didn't sink. Let them sink. God bless you. See you tomorrow.